Hola amigos. I thought I'd give today's pre one one talk, a little bit of a Mexican theme. Hope you enjoyed the rhythm. Uh, and I hope you like the hat. It's uh, ever so slightly itchy, so I'm gonna take it off before I get down to business. Do excuse me. Okay, so we're going to be looking at the uh, the idea of different psychological approaches. So what I want to do in this uh, is two slides. It should last about five minutes. Um, I want you to be really clear about what we mean by an approach. And uh, I want you to know a little bit about f the four approaches that we, we actually uh, look at. So it will give you just a, we'll just give you a, a quick taste of how each approach might explain the behavior. So here we have, I drew, I drew this um, a while ago. I couldn't, I couldn't produce anything of this quality live, so uh, I spent a bit of time working on it. Uh, so here we have a house with four different, with three different paths going towards it, three different ways of approaching the house. Now, if you think about these three people, um, as they go, this person here, as they look at the house down this path here, as they approach it from this direction, they will see something very different for uh, four windows, a door. Um, etc. They will see something very different from this person on this path um, with the. Uh, well, they're accompanied by a giant slug, by the looks of it. Anyway, they're going towards the, the path there, and they would certainly see one big window here and maybe a couple of these. And the person at the back here approaches from a different direction again, only sees. Um, only sees the, the, the back window and misses everything at the front. So, what we have is we have the same house three different approaches who would therefore explain the house in very different ways and that is exactly what we see exactly what we see uh, when different types of psychologists start looking at behavior so let's have a look at what we'll do is I'm going to take the uh, uh, the example of the behavior aggression and we'll look at that and just very uh, very speedily explain how the different approaches would explain that so here we have a situation uh, I didn't. I didn't want to show you it live. It was a bit too gory. But these two guys here had a bit of an argument. Uh, this person got very angry indeed, and uh, ended up lashing out, punching this guy who's knocked out and lying on the floor. So, four different psychologists standing round, looking and observing behaviour, and then thinking, how would we explain it? So a biological uh, approach or the biological approach, a biological psychologist would say that the behavior comes from somewhere inside the body. And what we have is that this person here may, for example, have too much of the hormone, uh, uh, too much of the hormone testosterone, which so that when that person is provoked, he lashes out, knocks this guy out. Um, and that's the reason for the behavior. The chemicals within the guy's body has actually made him do that. If we look at the learning approach or the behaviorist approach, totally different. Nothing to do with what's going on inside uh, his body here. The reason he behaves the way he does is because he has he'd grown up in an environment where people um, uh, punch one another, and that the people who um, and that if you punch people, you get rewarded. So you get your own way by punching, and therefore he's learned that that's a behavior that you do, and he repeats that behavior. Inside the body, environment. Two very different approaches already. So this is behaviorist, this is biological. The psychodynamic approach would explain um, why this uh, this man here has lashed out and not the other one out. Uh, it, could, it would argue possibly that, that there's been certain uh, really painful events in his childhood, which has caused deep-seated anger. And eventually, that anger hasn't gone away. That's buried deep in his unconscious. And eventually, that anger will get out. And needs to be uh, needs to be let out, and he does that by hitting this person. So not, nothing to do with learning. He doesn't remember. He didn't learn anything. He simply experienced something which buried deep in his unconscious, which comes out. Cognitive psychologists would look at this and say, actually, what happens is that human beings spend a lot of time trying to solve problems, and uh, there are lots of different ways of solving problems. But this this man thinks that this is a good way of solving a problem. He's uh, He's got a, a picture of the world that says, OK, if someone's getting in your way or someone's annoying you, that's a problem. How do you solve that problem? You knock them out. And off you go. So it's nothing to do with biology. It's to do with simply making a calculation about um, how you solve a problem and then doing that. OK, so we have then 
four different explanations, four different approaches to the same piece of human behavior. That's what makes psychology great because even something as seemingly simple as this can cause hours and hours of argument. Um, and you have to decide, and you know, you have to decide which of the perspectives maybe you think offers the best explanation in each case. Okay, we'll leave that one there. I've got, um, I think there's another video in this section that I make, might make, and then we'll give you a little quiz for, for two videos together. Okay, adios amigos.